it's old The weather outside is not that cold And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia Hello and welcome to Country with Celine. I am your host, Celine Schmerke She released her first EP last year called One Love Song at a Time And most recently released her latest single, Getting Over You Please welcome rising country singer Faith Schuler. Every time I love song comes on Okay, so I wanted to first talk about your EP that you released last year. 2020 was like an odd year for a lot of people, especially when it came to artists. And I've spoken to a lot of artists who were hesitant on releasing anything in 2020. They're like, I want to hold off and wait until at least maybe 2021 will be better or like 2022 even. So what made you decide to kind of take that leap and just release it? Well, honestly, so right when I released One Love Song at a Time, it was right before the pandemic hit. It was in February. And so I had all these high expectations and I was really excited because this was my first EP and I was planning this big release, you know, and I was hoping that it would really impact my career as an artist. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Um, and I was kind of devastated, like, oh, I worked so hard on all of this, and I feel like my hard work was for nothing, and so um, I released it, and actually, it ended up being a very good year for me. I know that it was a terrible year for the world, and it's very sad, but if anything good came out of it, I feel like my career really um, took off in 2020. I met my manager and he's been working with me and so many doors just opened and I got to communicate with people all around the world um, via Zoom. So it really ended up being okay. Um, and during this time, I had so much time to just write music. And I feel like all artists will say that because what else could we do, right? There's no shows or anything. So I was just writing all of my music in my bedroom or I would do Zoom writes with my producer in Nashville and some writers in Nashville. And I had all this music I was just like sitting on. And I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do with all of this? And um, so what I did was I decided that I was gonna pick my favorite songs and start recording some of them here and there. So um, instead of flying on a plane, my mom and I would hop in the car, drive all the way to Nashville, and we would record um, a few songs. And I just started releasing them because I figured, you know, like, why not? If I have all this music that I am dying to share, and I know that music is very healing, and I feel that my songs could really help people and uplift people and a really hard time. And so I was like, why not? Let's just make everyone feel good and hopefully bring some light into the year of 2020. And that's exactly what I did. I just went for it. And just quickly, how far is the drive from South Carolina to uh, Nashville? Um, so on a good day, <laughs> like nine hours. And then, um, so it's really not that bad. But my poor mom, she like will drive most of the way. And I'm like, do you want to switch? Like, can we take turns? Because I feel so bad. She's such a trooper for driving. Um, but definitely with traffic, it could be from like nine to 11 hours. Okay, that's not, that's not so bad. Here in Canada, like to drive from province to province is a lot longer than that. Um, so that's, yeah, that's like nothing. But going back, music is healing. And especially during the time of, of COVID, because it's still ongoing. Maybe not so much in the States, it doesn't seem like, but here in Canada, we're still kind of locked down and bunkered right. in and stuff. Um, but hearing new songs and it just, it, it brings such a healing to listeners, especially when during this whole time, because you want to hear new things, you, you want to connect to new music and, and this and that. And hearing new songs, just it helps and it really is healing. Um, and there's a reason for everything too. So I mean, you released it in the beginning of 2020 um, and the pandemic hit, but there was a reason that you released it. And I'm pretty sure your songs connected with a lot of people out there. So thank you for that. 
Of course. Thank you for saying that. That was definitely my, my goal of everything. I just wanted to kind of bring some light to the situation. I'm a very positive person. I always think how can, you know, I impact someone else's life and hopefully just try to make their day a little bit better. And um, I, I love to write. It's something that I just feel that I'm able to do and help others while doing it. And so um, I, I just thought it would be a great opportunity to kind of share, share some new songs and hopefully inspire others. Yeah, and you get to share that with the rest of the world. Yeah, which is so crazy. It's so <laughs> insane how music works and how, um, you know, now we live in a world of streaming mm -hmm. music and how people can just go on their Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon, wh whatever they use, and just search whatever song they want to listen to. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. It's a great way to connect with fans and, and friends. Mm -hmm. And before it was usually the CDs. Remember, you'd rent it like HMV. That's like what we had here. You'd buy yeah. your CD, then put it in your car, or put it in your radio player. Like now it's so easy. You have it at fingertips pretty much. I know. It's crazy. I, I remember that, like just rush, rushing to Target or um, CVS <laughs> to buy the new CD. Um, like Taylor Swift or Carrie Underwood, whoever I was listening to, I remember that was like one of my favorite days because I'm like, oh, I get to go get this new CD. And now we're like, oh, let's go to Spotify. <laughs> or let's go to Apple, you know? It's yeah. right there. It's so simple. And now your latest release, Getting Over You, it's been just over, I would say, two weeks now since it's been out. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling so blessed. Like, this is definitely the biggest reaction I've had to a song, um, and I'm mind blown at the like amount of people who are listening, and um, I'm just feeling very grateful because I've been getting support from Spotify, I've been getting support from Apple, and I'm very grateful for them, and as an independent artist, that means a lot to me, mm -hmm. um, and any independent artist will tell you like how difficult it is to really push your music and you've got to really use all of your resources so i've been using TikTok, social media instagram and um as well as just you know working with spotify and apple and so it's it's been amazing and i'm just really grateful for everyone who's been supporting me and listening to my new song and i was most excited about this song i truly believed in it like the second I wrote it, I was like, yeah, this, this is going to be a good one. And so I knew I just had to, you know, get it out there to everyone to enjoy as well. I've had my sleepless nights alone, praying to God that you were gone, doing everything to say a girl should never do. personal story behind this song? Was that written about someone in particular? <laughs> so I, I've been getting this question a lot and I feel like um, definitely like not what I've been through like right now. Like I'm, I'm in a happy relationship and I'll still sit there and write heartbreak <laughs> songs and stuff. But I think as we go throughout life, we have to overcome obstacles and situations and we learn from that. And I've gotten my heart broken before. And I'm sure a lot of people have, every girl, every guy, anyone will tell you that. Um, somewhere along the way, they got their heart broken. And so you never really forget that feeling, you know, mm -hmm. and it's almost something that makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. And I've had a few years now to really just kind of think about how I've grown. And um, so I decided, you know, let's see if we can write this breakup song. But I wanted to kind of put a positive spin on it and hopefully use, um, you know, what I've been through or what I see my friends or my family going through and help inspire others, you know, through that. So really the message is, is um, everything you put me through, like, man, it hurt me, you know, like it really yeah. dug deep. And I feel like a lot of people go through that, but instead of, you know, sitting there being like, oh, I wish that didn't happen or man, like that was a mistake, like, learn from your mistakes, look, like evaluate the situation and be like, you know, at the end of the day, everything that happened to me, yes, it was terrible. Yes, I wish I didn't have to go through that, but 
I came out on the other side a, a better person and I'm stronger now and it was worth it because I was able to get over this bad situation. And so I tried to kind of write this song about that, that, you know, instead of looking at everything in a negative way to kind of change it into something positive and hopefully a little bit more inspiring that just kind of gives you confidence and it mm -hmm. makes you feel better about, you know, a terrible breakup or a bad situation. That's exactly how you grow and how you evolve as yeah. a human. You need to go, it's trial and error. You need to go right. through step by step. Yes, okay, this relationship, it didn't work out, but this happened in the end. And then you grow from it. it no matter if the relationship ended bad, ended good, you just grow from it. And, and that song already has over 11,000 streams on Spotify. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are like, you know, this song, I could connect very well with it right now. <laughs> Aww, thank you. Yeah, that was the goal. Um, it's doing very well. And Apple Music, like the numbers are nuts. It's, probably, it's like over 21,000 today. Um, and it's just oh, been wow. a few weeks. So like total, I mean, I guess that's over 30,000 streams. And so it's like, wow, like these people are connecting with my song. And that's a lot of people, you know, like that's a lot of streams. And so to even fathom that in my brain is like insane to me. Um, but I'm really happy that this message can resonate with a bunch of, you know, men and women. Because um, I feel like it could really work in any situation, whether it's a friendship that ended or, you know, a bad relationship or whatever it may be. I just hope that I could really encourage others through it. And now I want to touch on one more song of yours. This one you kind of released before. Um, it's called Ever Yours. Now, this one's a pop song. And yeah. it has, it, it's with Greg Keys. And it has like an EDM twist on it as well. Like when you listen to it, it it's like it's like a Martin Garrix, but not Martin Garrix at the same time. But you know what I'm getting at? How, yeah. how is that experience like? Because you have the voice for like tracks like that, like a BB Rexa type of voice. So you could totally get away with that if you ever wanted to like go down that different route. Yeah. yeah, I, oh my gosh, it was so fun. Okay, so Greg Keys is a really good friend of mine. He's in Charleston as well. Um, and so we met, he invited me, he needed female vocals for like a show one day and he reached out to me on Instagram and that was like two years ago now. So we've been working together ever since. And so he, we were like, let's put out this song. And when he asked me to do one with him, I was so excited because don't get me wrong, I love country music, but um, it really allowed me to kind of dig into my pop roots yeah. a little bit and kind of have fun with it. Um, because growing up, I loved and appreciated all kinds of music, like R&B. I actually wanted to be an R&B singer for a very long time, like Adele or Sam Smith. Um, but then I took the country route, obviously. Um, so anyways, Greg and I were like, okay, let's sing Ever Yours. And we wrote the song. And once it was produced, I was so excited for it um, because I felt like it really tested my creativity. Um, and it was a little bit out of my comfort zone, which I enjoyed. And um, I just had a lot of fun making it. And I'm really happy that, you know, people are still streaming it to this day and jamming out to it all over the world. So it was definitely a great experience. Cause it's only yeah it is an awesome song i added that one to the cottage playlist i'm like this one's a good one and I don't know exactly how to check the numbers on Apple Music. I got to figure that one out. But on Spotify, because that one's so simple to check the numbers. That has 145,000 streams. Yeah, like streaming it, I don't know, all over the world, like in different countries. And um, it's really cool to see that people are just enjoying it from everywhere. And um, some people, when it came out, were like making dance videos to it. And it's just that makes my heart so happy because that's my goal. I just want people to have fun and to want to dance when they listen to um, my music or, or I'm sure Greg feels the same way. So we were very excited when people were just, you know, giving us this awesome reaction to our new song. 
I think we need a new one now. I mean, like 2021, maybe 2022. Yeah, I'm actually working on one. Ah, look at that. Round two. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, we're going to be stoked for that one. Yes. Uh, now, let's get to know you a little bit more. So, before the interview, you were saying that you grew up in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what made you decide to want to pursue a career in, in country music? What was that point where you're like, you know what, this is my passion and I want to do it? Yeah, so I've loved singing my whole life. Like my mom told me stories all the time when I was little. I would like hum myself to sleep before I could even like talk. I would just hum and kind of like carry a little melody and um, you know, I was that kid who would run around the house putting on a performance like 24 seven for everyone. Um, very energetic and outgoing. Um, and so I was just singing all the time. And one day my babysitter pointed out to my mom like, hey, I don't know if you know this, but your five year old has like a really good voice. <laughs> my mom was like, yeah, I'm kind of catching on to that. And so um, when I was younger, I was in choir and I always loved to just learn new instruments. And, you know, I was surrounded by music. And so I started as a dancer and I was dancing um, for nine years. And then I was dancing competitive, competitively um, for a little while. And I decided, hey, like, I love to dance, but I think I want to be a singer. And so at the age of 13, I started playing in coffee shops around um, my local town. And I was just writing my own music, not saying it was the best, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. And so I just began writing and singing. And I learned the piano at the age of nine. And I was just it just kind of happened. And ever since I decided for myself, hey, like, I want to be a singer, I've been pursuing it ever since. And um, the country part comes from my roots, you know, growing up in South Carolina, I was always surrounded by country music. And um, I just really appreciated the storytelling that country music presents. And so I loved that aspect of things. And Taylor Swift was one of my big influences in her whole country phase. And I still love her now, but definitely in her country phase, I was like, that's what I want to do. And that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I'm doing right now. Well, well, 13 years old and you were performing in coffee shops, you had to have a lot of confidence for that. Because I mean, not many 13 year olds are like, kind of like, would do that, would, would oh. have the guts to actually get up there and perform. It was terrifying. It really was. Like I, something about it. And I started realizing like it, it was being personal with people that scared me the most mm. because I'm 13 years old and I look back at some of the songs I wrote and I'm like, good grief, who broke your heart? Like these are the, <laughs> these are some very deep songs and I would perform them. I'd go to coffee shops and just like sit there at open mics and perform for people. But I realized that being very personal with people is probably what made me the most anxious and the most nervous, yeah. especially being 13. And another thing that came into play with all of it was, um, you know, are people going to take me seriously? Like I'm a 13 year old girl. Are they going to think I'm just, you know, a wannabe little star or are they going to take me seriously? And, um, hopefully you know people do now <laughs> hopefully people see that this is legit and i'm really pursuing this as a career but you you really do have to start somewhere and um as nerve-wracking as it was it was definitely worth it and i've grown so much since then and um yeah so it's great it's an awesome career to be in and now who would you say were your musical influences i heard taylor swift so i'm assuming she was yeah. one of them she was a very big one, um, especially because I listened to most of her music around the time when I really began writing my own music. So a lot of my inspiration came from, you know, her writing and her music. But also my mom and I loved to sing Martina McBride and the Rascal Flats mm -hmm. in the car. We would always jam Carrie Underwood, Miranda Lambert. Um, and then recently I've been loving Luke Combs and um, Brett Young is also phenomenal. So I have so many music influences who've really impacted my life as a musician and just as a person because their songs are also inspirational. So um, hopefully 
I can be like them one day and um, hopefully I'll be, people will be looking up to me and saying that I'm one of their music influences one day. That would be amazing. That would, I just got shivers when you said that. So that's a good thing. When I get shivers, that's a good thing. So, I mean, put it out there. You, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to, if you yeah. want something bad enough, you chase it until the end of time. Like you just go after it and give it all you got and you will make it like guaranteed hands down you will make it if you really truly believe in it and you believe in your craft you believe in music and so you're gonna get there just be patient and trust the process absolutely oh thank you so much for saying that that's very very inspiring and motivating um and i really appreciate that because people like you is people who keep me going so oh. i appreciate that a lot you're so cute okay um and dream collaboration because you named a, a lot of good um oh, artists yeah. out there Okay, I've got this. I've got this one. Um, so I love Lee Bryce. And I don't think I even said him in my inspirations, but he's a big one. And <laughs> I feel like every time I'm singing in the car to his songs, our voices just like fit so well together. I almost feel like I'm a girl version of Lee Bryce sometimes. And I'm like, I would love to collab with Lee Bryce. And then also, um, Miranda Lambert is like another dream collab. I feel like we could get up there and kill like a girl power song on stage. So um, those are my top two probably. So you know what you have to do with that? On TikTok, I've been seeing a lot of artists, they were covering another artist's songs and then that artist would respond back to them and they would like mash them. And like he would be, there was one with Toby Keith. Toby Keith, oh. was, like he was doing it. And then um, he was like, just saying like, it was really good. Like the way that the girl was singing it, like was really good. So I'm like, you never know. If you do one with like Lee Bryce, like any song of his, and then like maybe he'll, um, I don't know what that word is, but they they like sing duet. together. Yeah, the duets. Yeah, That's my God. Yeah, yeah, duet. I couldn't think of that word. They duet them. And then, I mean, or Miranda Lambert, you know, you never know. Oh yeah, no, I've seen it. I actually did a cover of the I Hope You're Happy Now by um, Lee Bryce and yeah. Carly Peters. And Lee Bryce reposted it on his story and I like had a fangirl moment. I was oh. like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. So yeah, Lee Bryce, if you're listening, let's collab. We're gonna have to do it. You gotta, you gotta do it. I did not know that though. That's awesome. See, it works. <laughs> if you watch this, it just shows he's watching. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to have to try that. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> you got to do it again. You can keep trying. Honestly, just keep going, keep going. Yes. Keep going. Um, <laughs> no, it's me, Lee Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> and now your name is Faith. Okay, so my name is Celine. I was named after, just after Celine Dion. So, like, I'm wondering, is there Faith Hill? Are you named after Faith Hill? Oh, no. But you know how many people have introduced me as Faith Hill on accident? Especially being in the country industry. I think they just slip up. <laughs> on multiple occasions I'm like oh no oh. <laughs> people's hopes way up here um, <laughs> no I am not it wasn't inspired by Faith Hill but that would be pretty cool it, it was more of like um I think so my mom had a really hard time having me and so I was she had to have a lot of faith and that's kind of how my whole name came about is just you know it's more of a biblical term, I guess. That's more <laughs> Rather than an artist. That's yeah. so much more meaningful than being named yeah. after Faith Hill. <laughs> hey, Celine Dion is very meaningful, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's Celine. She's like the queen. <laughs> she is the queen, really. Uh, and now, Faith, okay, before I let you go, we're going to play a little game. I've been calling Country with Celine Rapid Fire, so I'm going to shoot you out a couple questions, okay. answer them, and then... Oh, man, my answers are always so long, so this will be interesting. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. You'll be good. You'll be good. Um, what was your first job? Um, I worked in a boutique slash hair salon. Oh, okay, that's neat. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite TV show? Uh, Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Not Friends? No. Well, Friends is really good too. Friends is really good. I love Jennifer Aniston, but definitely still Grey's Anatomy. I've, I've watched the whole season and that's like over 300 hours of episodes. So I think I'm very committed, honestly. Yeah, I, I think you're very, and Mick Dreamy though, he's cute though, Mick Dreamy. Yes, that is true. <laughs> um, what is your favorite movie? Um, I love Safe Haven and literally like any Disney movie. I love Disney. 
was it Safe Haven um, filmed in, in South Carolina? Was it? I think a part of it was, actually. I, I love that movie. I've seen it many, many times. Yeah. And Julian Huff is just gorgeous. So she's a great actress as well. She's a really, and he's hot. What's his name again? Now I'm blanking. I don't know. I can't even think of it. Oh, his name. oh my gosh. I can't think of his name. He was married to Fergie. That's all I remember. Oh, um, <laughs> oh that's so funny. Um, okay. Celebrity crush. Um, I really have no idea. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Scott Eastwood. Oh. Oh, yeah. we're, yeah. we're, we're going there. Oh, he's a cutie. <laughs> he's a cutie. Um, and the last one, what is your favorite saying? Um, if you believe it, it will happen. I like it. It's because it's true. It is. It is true. And I think that if you truly believe in something like you were saying earlier, um, it just gives you that motivation to just do it. And mm -hmm. uh, if you believe hard enough, then it will happen. Exactly, exactly. I love it, Faith. Well, thank you so much um, for joining me today on Country with Celine. Um, everybody, go stream Getting Over You. It's out now. You're going to love it. And thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, it was so nice meeting you. I really appreciate you talking with me today. Anytime, Faith. You're so cute. <laughs> thank you. So are you. Let's be BFFs. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. We'll go for yes. drinks today. Yes, that sounds great. I love it. You can't be falling in love.